All right, well, hey there, folks. I'm uh, meteorologist Matt Barentine. I hope you're having yourself a good Monday, such as it is on a Monday, I guess. Uh, it's another hot day out there. Somebody's got this TV turned up. When they do that, I get a feedback. So I can hold on just a second. Let me see if I can't figure out which remote. There's like five remotes here. So bear with me just a second. There we go. Don't want to be hearing that monitor the whole time. Um, once again, uh, meteorologist Matt Barentine, thank you so much for joining us here on uh, our Fox 10 digital set. And of course, we're keeping a, an eye on everything that's going on with weather-wise. Want to give you a full update. We'll talk about what we got going on out there today, what we got coming in, in the next several days, and of course, take a good deep look here at the tropics to give you all the details that you need to know about the things happening out of the tropics. First off, I'll start here with uh, what it looks like outside right now. Obviously, nice, it's pretty, but hot, 92 degrees in Mobile right now. You see the dew point at 66. Now, I know dew points are confusing because they show up as temperatures, but don't ever think of a dew point as a temperature. Think of it more of a scale. And anytime it's below 70 in the summertime for us, that's, that's pretty good. That means it's not very humid. Anytime it gets above 70, then things start to get sticky, okay? It also means, see, the feels like temperature, the heat index, 92 degrees right now, but it feels like 95. So you, you don't add a whole lot uh, when the humidity is a little bit lower like this. So, you know, if this dew point was at, say, 73, the feels like temperature would be like 103, 104, something like that. The heat index would be higher, uh, even with that same temperature of around 92 degrees. If you pop up that, that dew point, that means it's more humid out there, your higher heat index values. And um, it's just all, it's all... Like, you know, it's all relative to how you feel, right? Because what happens is you sweat, your sweat evaporates. That's your body's natural ability to cool itself. The more humid it is, the harder that is for your body to do. And that makes it feel hotter than what it is. So the lower that humidity is, the more comfortable it feels to the human body. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about some of the other things going on here. Go ahead and get into the uh, good little shower here. This is around Crestview over in the panhandle. So one little tiny shower popping up, and I think we'll see a couple more here and there. Obviously, it won't be a whole lot. Not seeing, we're not gonna see a whole bunch of showers and storms out there today. It's going to be pretty limited. There are some offshore, you can see some strikes of lightning there, but those are pretty far offshore at this point. Don't know if they'll be able to make it all the way onshore. But, you know, a couple, one or two more little showers popping up this afternoon is possible, but most of us, most of us will remain dry here through the afternoon. The good news is, in the coming days, we do have some better rain chances. So that, and that's really good news because uh, obviously uh, we've been awfully dry. We're dealing with a severe drought across a good bit of our area right now. Our yards are pretty well crispy because of all the, uh, the lack of rain and with the heat on top of it. So that's what we've been dealing with here um, for a while now. All right, let's go ahead and check out the, uh, I'm going to take you outside again. This is another scene from a uh, downtown mobile from our admiral camera and uh looking out here over the uh, i-10 area traffic going into the wallace tunnel coming out of the wallace tunnel everything looks like it's moving pretty smoothly it is a little bit hazy out there which is to be expected on a on a hot and toasty afternoon you can see you have uh, partly cloudy skies for the rest of the afternoon temperatures gradually coming down still gonna be pretty warm when folks are getting off work here still be uh in the upper 80s at 6 o'clock, in the mid 80s there at 7 o'clock. And the sunset is right around 7 now. So we're starting to get those earlier sunsets now that we are moving into um, uh, getting closer to that fall time of year. All right, so let's go ahead and keep checking on the future cast here. Let's get you this into motion. And like I said, a couple of showers are possible in the future cast. Let me get this fully blown up so you can see it a little bit better. I do believe I have a couple of showers around late this afternoon. You can see that on the future cast. The ones that are showing up are really tiny. They don't amount to much, but they're there. There's a couple. So some possibilities there for us with some showers and storms uh, coming up. So no worries there. Uh, just a couple of showers uh, happening out there. As we look towards tomorrow, I think we'll start out with some coastal showers in the morning. You'll see those here coming in off the coastline. Oop, zoomed in a little too much. Let me back that off. You can see a couple of showers showing up tomorrow morning. So those could impact your commute, something to think about. Shouldn't be a big deal, but a few will likely be around showing up here on the um, modeling. And as we go into that's 10 a.m. on your Tuesday morning, you see a few more showers in coastal areas there. 
And then as we keep working our way into around the noontime hour, a few more showers popping up across the air, maybe a couple of rumbles of thunder that continues on to the afternoon. So we do have some scattered chances coming up tomorrow. So no big deal, but there will be some around. Hey, we could use that rain. Whatever we can get out of that tomorrow will be great. So some scattered showers are possible coming up here for your Tuesday. So here's how it looks. We wake up. Winds will be calm, coastal showers, temperatures generally in the low 70s, so not bad with that. Once again, hopefully get a few of those showers around. And we'll continue to see a couple of scattered showers around throughout the afternoon, maybe a couple of rumbles of thunder. It's going to be another hot day tomorrow, mid-90s on I-10 I and northward. So a hot and a toasty day coming up for us there tomorrow. Let me go ahead and widen things back out. Here's how it looks uh, the next three days. It takes us into Wednesday and Thursday. You can see those 40%, 40%, 30% chances of rain. Temperatures hot Tuesday, hot Wednesday. Then you see starting to come down by Thursday. We are going to eventually start to see our temperatures. I'm just going to say moderate. I don't really want to say cool, cool off, even though technically they are. But it's this time of year, I advertise 88, 89 degrees. So really, we're just kind of bringing things down to normal. All right, let's go out to the tropics. Obviously, a lot happening out here. We've got Hurricane Lee. We got Tropical Storm Margo. And then we got two other systems there that we're keeping an eye on. Margo is just going to float around out there in the middle of the Atlantic before finally fizzle, fizzling out. Complete non-entity. Then we got this little, little yellow one right there. This one's actually going to get basically consumed by the larger wave behind it. That larger wave has a, is, is going to develop. They have it at medium at 60% right now. I'm telling you that one will eventually develop. It will eventually become the in-storm Nigel. Nigel. So this one will become the in-storm elite. This little tropical wave out ahead of it, so don't even think about that one. And then it is basically going to follow in the same exact path as Lee did, pretty much, is what we're looking at. So we got Hurricane Lee, and then we got Nigel that will eventually develop and follow basically in right behind it, guys. All right, and sorry, I got this thing that keeps popping up on here. It messes it up. All right. Get that to work right. All right, so uh, here's what Lee looks like right now. Once again, a Category 3 uh, major hurricane moving to the northwest at 8 miles per hour. You know, obviously the great news here with Lee is that it's been out over open water, continues to be out over open water. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Will that always be the case? Maybe not. Eventually it's going to work its way, make this big right-hand turn. Now, I know folks always go, how do you all know it's going to make that right-hand turn? There's a trough coming off the U.S. It's going to pick it up. That is not in question at all. This storm is going to turn north. The only question comes, how strong is that trough? Is it strong enough to completely lift it out? It does not appear so. It looks like it's going to be, as we get towards the end here, you can see what we're looking at. This is Cape Cod, Boston, of course, and this is what's called the Gulf of Maine. Of course, that is Maine right there. And this could, storm could go right into the Gulf of Maine. It may turn at the last minute and hit Nova Scotia, which is this part right here sticking out part of the Canadian Maritimes. That is Nova Scotia. So that's going to be the big question mark here, you know, coming next weekend. Saturday going in, basically Saturday is when it would get there. That's Saturday morning. So we'd be talking about Saturday late in the day or maybe early Sunday morning. So that's going to be a big concern for folks up in New England. Another big concern with this storm is going to be what happens with its waves. There's going to be some very large waves. And let me go ahead and back this up here a little bit. So by when it's going by Bermuda, see the, right there, we're talking 40, 45 foot waves out ahead of this. Now, along the East Coast, bad rip currents, waves that are probably going to be up to around 15 feet. All right, so as this gets towards the end of that run, going towards next weekend, this will be next Saturday, these are waves going, this is once again, the Gulf of Maine, and showing waves 30 feet high going into the Gulf of Maine. So that's going to be a huge concern with this system as it works its way there. So that's going to be probably the number one concern that we have with this storm is if it makes its way up into the Gulf of Maine. It will be a much weaker storm at that point. It won't have these the, the Category 3 winds at that point. 
but it will have some very large waves. That'll be a big concern with that system. So once again, that's Lee, that's Margo, and then the other tropical wave back here that we'll be keeping an eye on over time. Here's, I wanted to show you this. This is the modeling. I'm going to get it big so you can see it full. There it is. That is the storm, uh, Lee, working its way up into the Gulf of Maine. Once again, that would be a, you know, won't be a major hurricane at that point, but boy, it'll be a nasty storm. And once again, it could have, you know, waves, you know, getting up to 20 foot plus in spot. So it's going to be a major impact up there uh, in the Gulf of Maine, the New England area, Nova Scotia, the Maritimes, and Canada as they deal with it. So that would be next weekend. It shows that next Saturday. Now watch, I'm going to put this in motion. And once Lee makes landfall up there, maybe sort of brushes by up there, that other storm I was talking about, Nigel, will basically be falling right in its footsteps. Look at that. That would be Nigel. That would be on the 20th of this month. So we're talking 10 days out, uh, roughly, nine days out. Uh, there will be another system. Now, notice the, the Gulf, perfectly fine. No worries there. I don't see anything happening in our local waters anytime soon. So the action will continue to be out in the Atlantic. That's what we're going to be keeping an eye on. And once again, that would be Nigel there, out there north of Puerto Rico. All right, so back to the uh, long-range forecast. What we're talking about here in the next several days, there will be some scattered showers and storms kind of off and on. We're kind of going back and forth here between 30 and 40% rain chances. Temperature-wise, look at this. Mid-90s, low-90s, upper-80s. So like I said, I don't want to say we're cooling off. Technically, we are. But really what we're doing is we're bringing our temperatures finally, finally back down to normal. Our temperatures haven't been normal since uh, early July, maybe. It's been a long time. We've been above normal forever. We didn't even have a normal temperature in August. 93 was the coolest day in August. So and we've basically carried right into September with these really hot temperatures. So it's going to be good to see finally getting down to temperatures that are more, you know, still going to be warm, obviously, still be hot. It's still September after all, but gradually going to bring things down. I don't see that first fall yet, first fall blast, you know, about late September at some point. Usually that's when we get that first little taste of fall. We'll get that first little taste and it'll heat up again for about a week or two, right? And then we'll finally get back into, then we'll finally get into real fall sometime in uh, some point in October. Well, sometimes we have to go through a few ups and downs before we get there. That's usually the case. Uh, don't see that yet. It's going to stay hot to warm at least through the next six days and through the end of the week. So that's how things are looking. I'm meteorologist Matt Barentine. I really appreciate you checking in and uh, letting me ramble at you a little bit. Uh, we'll be on tonight. Hey, it's a new 3 o'clock show. So if you happen to be near TV here at 3 o'clock, come check us out. We'll be having a new 3 o'clock show for you. You can check that out, of course. We've got our 4 o'clock and our 5 o'clock as well, all afternoon long. Hey, we're here for you. Check in with us. We'll give you all the latest, not only on your weather, but on news and everything else. Take care. Great to see you. Come check us out.